as as mentioned uh, myself, I only really started more seriously reading up on agroecology maybe one and a half, two years ago. Um, Ariane is much deeper in this field, um, but we always had uh, um, thought, well, we need to maybe shed uh, a critical light, uh, an investigative light on the various discourses that are brought together in this field. And having read up on it um, more detailed, uh, obviously, um, it was a positive experience. It's, it's a very appealing outlook on, on what, how, and, and a way to maybe um, orient uh, farming and the food system. Um, there's a lot of promises being made there. Um, but from our perspective as political economists, institutional economists, um, obviously, we, we should be very um, weary and very interested and think about and put the questions about, okay, how to organize that, how to govern people uh, working in such a food system, how to, um, will people be homo economicus or will they be work functioning in a different manner? And there's, so there is a lot of a very normative, very value, value-driven um, ideas putting being put forward in agroecology about how to govern um, agroecological transactions, production, and the food system. How we would change, how would consumers would change their behavior, and in result of that, and that's uh, largely attributed to different ways of governing and very much promoting collective action, common property regimes. And embedding this in what is called polycentric governance, which is kind of an, an upscaling of collective action across civil society, private actors, and uh, the state, where people more from the bottom up um, organize the food system and also contest the way the food system is organized in a particular space and say, we can do this better, um, more in line maybe with citizens and, and consumers will, and therefore in polycentric governance, a different way would be taking over. And that's being alluded to, associated with discourse on agroecology. Ecology, it's mentioned there, but in the section we work quite a bit on polycentric governance. And so we thought let's let's maybe um take give a more give a deeper uh, thought to what it means to have a polycentrically organized agroecological um farming and food system. So we are thinking about what could, what are the gaps in polycentric governance theorizing, thinking about agroecology, but also are these uh, ways of thinking in fact com compatible? Um, and can we, uh, is there also, aren't there also important critiques of polycentric governance and how would they be inherited or transferred to agroecology? And is that still the kind of ecology, agroecology that is actually being desired? That was our research puzzle. And that's what we want to briefly now talk about. I'm going to briefly introduce this idea of normative polycentric governance. And then uh, Ariane is going to take over. She's going to talk about um, a little bit about these, these normative assumptions and ideas of agroecology in relation to governance and agency and the structures embedding farming and food system. And then she's going to talk about uh, the critique, the gray areas, the incompatibilities maybe also between these different frameworks. And there's really a very fascinating research agenda behind this and a conceptual, but also empirical research agenda, I think, that we here, for example, want to engage with much more in the future. So what is polycentric governance? I already uh, kind of uh, mentioned it. Um, normative polycentric governance, it's really about collective goods provisioning among civil society, private actors, and the state. Um, which kind of check on each other because they are always able to associate and organize the food system, for example, in one way or in a different way, um, according to, and that's very important, citizen consumers' uh, preferences. They, they act at the, at the counter in the supermarket or at the voting ballot or kind of organizing themselves in parties or in civil society making themselves heard. And that way, bringing their desires, their ways of thinking about how to organize the farm system about. And polycentric governance conventionally is actually interested in, um, in effect, an effective way of governing. That's really what it's interested in, coordinated governing, uh, in line with citizens' and consumers' preferences. It's not privileging a, a very uh, expansive uh, public goods provisioning, it's just saying it should be according to citizens' and consumers' preferences. 
Uh, and in that regard, it should be effectively organized, organized in a coordinated way. Um, and what actually in, uh, researchers in this field try to do, they try to identify the conditions under which um, polycentric governance emerges in an ordered manner and under which governance uh, kind of uh, meets the expectations of citizens and consumers. So is this in line with agroecology? That, that may be a question now. Um, and this normative polycentric governance is then um, referring to all kinds of political theory in the background that it brings forward and says, well, if we had this kind of societal system structure like this, polycentric normative govern, govern, gov governance would emerge and, and then um, we would be on an evolutionary path in which uh, citizen consumers preferences are very well met. And there's a long list here, and you will see, as with agroecology, um, there's a big gap between what polycentric governance uh, suggests, how societies should be structured, and what we actually observe. So it's about um, shared values within this community as a, as a grounding for organization, for bottom-up collective action, in a sense. Um, there should be a lot of knowledge shared also on the performance, for example, of the food system as a basis for, for acting, no? for, for making yourself heard if you're discontent. You first need the information. It should be able, you, people should be able and allowed and ideally even helped, supported in organizing themselves, um, pretty much irrespective of what their claims are, what their issues are. No? Um, people sh and those in the governance business, let's say, should be accountable. So obviously there's a kind of, uh, a, let's say, northern democratic understanding of state behind this. Um, and it's more of a liberal kind. It em has emerged out of northern American thinking, um, scholars from there. So this is very much uh, visible here. People should be entrepreneurs. If they see, if they're discontent, they should be organizing themselves. Yeah, they should be artisans, entrepreneurs that are able to bring people together and, and make themselves heard. And um, the political system should allow for contestation, for being, for making yourself heard if you're discontent with how things are done. And only in this context, polycentric governance works. So it's again, it's kind of the agroecology challenge is now shifted to the a, a very important political challenge of just establishing this kind of context. And then the assumption that this would actually lead to a, a, a polycentric governance um, and an agroecological system that is uh, sustainable as we would maybe desire it. And with this, I want to give over hand over to Ariane. So I, I come to the, the second part where we um, weave it together with, well, now if you apply it, it's very popular in, in a lot of literature, people refer to it. What does it actually add and where are limits and where are even problems or, you know, needs further development. I mean, what it adds is it, it, it provides um, some form of knowledge uh, on, on constitutional and dynamic underpinnings of governance that are so far often not being spelled out that clearly. It also brings in a focus on learning networks, decentral decision-making and multi-level um, decision-making. It also has an openness to different modes depending on context. Now you could say this is already a gray area because um, part of the political agroecology debate is replacing a, a, a competitive market system via other forms of participatory collaboratory regime. So, um, this would be to be discussed. And it provides a reflection on, on evolutionary adaptive pressures. However, it's also challenged, this normative framework, it's challenged of uh, polycentric governance by agroecology. Uh, it's ahistorical, it's culturally blind. It's Asians, uh, as Andreas already said, come close to a homo economicus. So, you know, what is the idea of man in agroecology that would need to be discussed? Um, it does not reject commodification and in information sharing through the market, which uh, political agroecology would question, at least in the form how the market is structured currently. What is a market? You know, it opens another set of questions. Um, and it also so far has no answers or would uh, regarding how to rescale the interrelations in, 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 in collective uh, um, goods provisioning. Now we picked out some examples, you know, 
to highlight, and I don't have so much time. I try to go through as quick. One important thing is if you are if you are um, if you come from a different discipline like uh, political economy or philosophy, immediately you stumble over the term citizen consumer, and um, or you can stumble. So the good thing is about citizen consumers, the, the double role within an individual is acknowledged. I mean, you could have more roles, you know, but uh, it's an economic theory. So as a, as a, as you, you're a citizen and a consumer, however, the theory does not uh, disentangle what that actually means. So because a, a political scientist, Benjamin Barber called it civic, civic schizophrenia, you, your citizen in yourself can be in conflict with your consumer. Okay, so then um, uh, that's part of uh, a problem. What this also reflects on is um, it is not clear how it treats the public versus the private sphere, which is for the, so this would be, have to be um, further elaborated. Um, and so certain, so how do we, evaluate public issues or private issues uh, to say they are fair, equitable, and just, you know, all this kind of questions arise. So on that level also, it will not provide so far any answers. The other thing is that it um, reduces sustainability transformations and information you could call as preference formation for the better. So again, this, you know, then the question is, if you organ, if you provide conditions so that citizens and consumers and different actors um, can come to um, a solution that is that they consider most suitable, the question is: is most most suitable also sustainable? Okay, because I mean, agency is embedded in a particular context, shaping agency and so forth, which so far is not uh, taken up by polycentric governance, um, this agency structure and relationship uh, is not taken account to uh, into account so far. Um, okay, I only have two, how many more? Two minutes. Okay. Um, checks and balances within uh, polycentric governance. Um, they apply largely to the public administration and actors uh, interrelations. However, they do not take up so far uh, private authority, like the rise of corporate governance and so forth, the rise of private authority, uh, called also the new rulers in the food system. I mean, that's a central part of the critique of political agroecology about current conditions. Um, okay, so this would have to be taken on. Generally, perhaps the problem is that structural power so far is left outside of the analysis, uh, partially because there is an assumption of natural and uh, or of empirical and um, analytical egalitarianism. Okay, so uh, this, so what's currently not happening, it's uh, to connect institutional settings with systemic settings to bring in power asymmetries and um, okay, and this brings us back to the politics, you know, it focuses largely on institutionalized politics, formal politics, but uh, as you are aware, there is an insider outside, uh, outsider problem usually, so how does it actually help to think about marginalized concerns and groups uh, within if, if the focus is mainly on formal institutionalized politics. Also, what um, does it have to, again, coming back to the um, structural issues, how does it, uh, and the normative issues, how to think about redistribution and how to think about going about beyond the distributive paradigm, which actually the food sovereignty um, movement pushes for, you know, it's not anymore how much do you get, how much do you get, but also who gets to decide, it, it, the, the, the questions run deeper. Okay, so one minute left. Um, to conclude, we thought, okay, how, if we applied, and the, it's very popular, what do we need to further think about? 
it's like, you know, there are a lot of questions like, will citizens align with public good preferences of agriculture? How to territorialize polycentric governance according to bio reason and social, social ecological constraint trade? Um, and how to integrate like uh, international political economy context within the framing and the um, reasonings of polycentric governance and generally how to con conceptualize and induce an evolution from a corporate food regime to a polycentric agroecological regime that are some of the questions that we that came up in Asia. Okay, thank you.